After Treaty of Alinagar Saraja Dalla treated nobles and ministers in even more violent way than usual. He was rash and harsh towards his commanders. There were murmurs of discontent and mutterings of the disaffected nobles at court and hints of possible coup. Mir Jaffer was prepared to offer the company the vast sum of 2.5 crore rupees if they would help him remove Saraja Dalla. The scheme had wide backing among the nobility but that Mir Jaffer, an uneducated general with no talent in politics, was simply a front for the real force behind the coup, the Jugget Seth bankers. The bankers and merchants of Bengal who sustained Saraja Dalla's regime had finally turned against him and united with the disaffected parts of his own military. Now they sought to bring in the mercenary troops of the East India Company to help depose him. A secret committee made up of senior British East India Company officials in Bengal formally resolved to join the conspiracy. The committee was unanimously of the opinion that a revolution in the government would be extremely for the advantage of the company's affairs. Mir Jaffer and the Jugget Seth had significantly raised their offer to 28 million rupees, the entire annual revenue of Bengal for their help overthrowing Siraj, and a further 110,000 rupees a month to pay for company troops. In addition, the East India Company was to get Zamandari, landholding, rights near Calcutta, a mint in the town and confirmation of duty-free trade. By May 19, in addition to this offer, Mir Jaffer conceded to pay the East India Company a further enormous sum 10 million rupees as compensation for the loss of Calcutta and another 5 million rupees as compensation to its European inhabitants. The victorious Clive entered as conqueror in Murshidabad, capital of Bengal on June 29 preceded by music, drums and colors, and escorted by a guard of 500 soldiers. Clive was paid 15 million rupees found in treasury by Mir Jafar, the new Nawab of Bengal. Clive walked into the Saraja Dalla's palace, loaded the entire contents in about 200 boats and sailed them to Fort William. It was one of the largest corporate windfalls in history, in modern terms around 232 million pounds, of which 22 million pounds was reserved for Clive excluding the precious items looted from palace. As soon as they entered the Great River, they were joined by the boats of the squadron, and altogether formed a fleet of 300 boats. With music playing, drums beating, the colors flying, and exhibited to the French and Dutch, whose settlements they passed. A scene far different from what they beheld a year before, when the Siraj Ud Dalla's fleet and army passed them, with the captive English, and all the wealth and plunder of Calcutta. The first gain to the BEIC was that it immediately acquired all the land within the Maratha ditch and 600 yards beyond. The company also acquired Zamandari, red ownership, of all the land between Calcutta and the Bay of Bengal. A length of 80 kilometers along the Hooghly River, effectively taking over the most productive part of the province. This was to have murderous effect on local Bengalis two decades later. That was just the beginning. <laughs>